Welcome to a essay about why these doors here are ridiculous. The idea of pillarless doors. I had a the motor go on my electric window here on Goldie. This is our camera car. And I kind of like didn't deal with it for a while because it failed in the up position. So I'm like, all right, whatever. It's $5,000 Subaru. What do I care? I'll just turn on the air conditioner, which does work. But um, Rock Auto reached out and said, hey, do you want some parts? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's give this a try. <laughs> I've never replaced the actuator because uh, the motor on uh, second gen Foresters and I think for most Subarus, most of them, I think, or all of them, I think, in the early 2000s were running pillarless doors. Uh, you pretty much replace the entire assembly. Yes, you can replace just the motor, but as it turns out, this design does not make sense to me. Why, why did Subaru do pillarless doors? Because it turned this... What I thought was, oh, it'll take an hour at most two. I know how to take a door card off. No, I'd rather do spark plugs on a suit on an EJ25 than do another window actuator. Because here's the thing with pillarless doors. Because there's no full frame of the door to hold the window in place, there has to be internal guide rails inside the door to keep the window tensioned against the you know top of the car. So there's torque on the window, so it seals against the against the weather stripping there because when the window is up, it becomes a structural point. This is an idiotic part of car design. I recognize that if you have a convertible, a pillarless doors make sense because there's nothing stupider than a, a full-size door on a car with no roof. It looks dumb. So in that sense, I understand it. Nick Roman drives an SN95 Mustang, which is a hard top, but it still has pillarless doors because, of course, Ford isn't going to design two different doors depending if the Mustang is a convertible or not. But no Subaru Foresters or anything was a convertible in those days. So why do they have pillarless doors? The only thing a pillarless door gets you on a hard top is slight easier entrance and egress because you can kind of bend your body around where the top of the door was. But is that worth incredible complexity in its design? No, it's not. It doesn't really even make the door, oh, it makes the door lighter. Not really, because you have all this extra metal in there to guide the window because there's no guides on the top of the window. So there has to be all this junk on the bottom. Anyway, so what did I learn from this? I learned uh, if your window goes on a Forester, uh, just pay to have some guy who works on Subarus who knows how. Because I ended up having, I ended up taking this to um, the Deer Lake Auto. So shout out to them because I got the actuator out and I couldn't get it back in again. So and then I take it to Jared. Shout out to Jared over at Deer Lake Auto, which is a Subaru specialty shop, and he did in 30 minutes what I couldn't do in six hours because he just had the muscle memory to put it, put it back together. So yeah, pillarless doors. It's a stupid concept. Hopefully we'll try like a repair that I can do with Rock Auto and uh, they'll help me out again. I mean, I feel sorry for countries that don't have access to Rock Auto. You know, you... You can choose between like 20 different parts of, uh, of uh, what you want for your car. And you can see all the, and it makes, it makes cross-referencing easy. I mean, this is a, an extra free plug for Rock Auto. Half the time I'm using the, the website just to research part numbers and see what cross-references. So anyway, uh, I think we're going to try, I'm getting a cylinder misfire on number four here. I've um, been getting uh, codes and there's some hesitation going on. So that'll probably be the next repair thing uh, for the camera car is we've got a misfire cylinder four, um, which probably means spark plugs, which means, yay, I get to do spark plugs. But at least that's straightforward. Uh, take out the battery, take out the windshield washer reservoir, maybe, and get in there. Thankfully, I don't have a turbo car, so there's some room to move in here. So that'll be the next stop. Anyway, thanks for watching.